Thank you so much. I'd like to finish tonight with a new piece. It's a little rough, but I hope you'll enjoy it. And I'd like to dedicate it to a man you might know, Père Yann Boisjoli. I had hoped he'd come tonight, but, well, you all can just tell him that I was thinking about him and of some of the things that we used to talk about when I was just a little girl growing up right around here. Grade 10 was the first year I taught him. It was two years after his grandfather died, and his childlike eyes still weren't wide the way they'd been when his granddad was still alive. Had a storm cloud on his brow with dark skies overhead, but they were bringing no rain to that part of him dead. For a whole year, he sat at the back of my class, listless, disinterested, shaking his head. And soon, like a wounded animal, he began gnawing at those mental manacles, hollering. He didn't want to be bound to a desk and forced to sit round when he was wired for sound. The smartest kid in the class, just scraping past. A bright spark gone dark with no plans to embark on any kind of career. Oh, he'd spent too many years hanging out with his grandfather. The old Jamaican barber people call the pelican, because he's a social bird who used to spend all his time discussing life with friends. A religious man, but unorthodox, had all kinds of plans and crazy thoughts about the way the world ought to be moving. Actually believed that if institutions would leave people to create their own lives, they might actually realize the kinds of worlds that exist in God's eyes. He used to call himself a black anarchist. Even claimed to have a beef with James Meredith used to disintegration, said he wasn't really down with Brown versus the Board of Education. In his view, the true problem needing solving was school. He used to ridicule them, their brainwashed fools, would send them picnic down to get drowned in the whirlpool of the public school system. He had no air conditioner to keep his shop cool, enlisting all kinds of young men, especially them from the tenements, to just kick it there in the cool air and break down Babylon while he cut hair. <laughs> he even told me one day that he was giving Andre a better education than any one of them in school in the nation. Said the boy knew by childhood more about surviving in the hood and as much about the good as any teacher ever could or would teach him. But you still got to give it to him, that old pelican. Because they were some smart men Andre grew up around back then. Mas Benny, Pupa Lenny, and what name? Arat Spots, Steady Liming, discussing everything from Brand Nubian to Coltrane, Leviticus to Oshun, colonization to repatriation, and Bakaron to Peter Tosh and Dennis Brown. He preached on and on and on. Oh, you could cut school, hang there, and be cool. But to this day, I still say that that crib, it wasn't no place for a young kid who needed to be geared on pursuing some kind of career. How was he going to seize power if he cannot even steer? But crazy old man that his granddad was. Oh, he remained appalled at what he called the education buzz. He was always talking wild, yellow eyes, fiery, ranting old school style, putting the system on trial. Why? The desire for learn? Why? <laughs> that is not a need we need for be taught, you know. The real shit, you must earn it. It cannot be bought. You see the schools them? That is a false religion, yes. An opiate of the masses. It have all of them, they're pretty white color, they're upon the pipe, a take night class. But this your generation, who no want to gamble, for shoot, for the jackpot? Well, that I go put you in a one piece of shamble, you hear me? School junkies soon turn crackpot. You better stay away. Hmm? Cause wise man say, the wheel is crooked. The rich, them always win. But the poor, them get hook. Well, them get hooked. Lots of people used to tease him about his pessimism. Pessimism, nah. 
It was bruised idealism. And in the end, it was that that killed him. Sure, he died of a heart attack. But you ask me, a man like that can only live so long. Well, that old man claimed he was self-reliant and strong. He raved about friendship so much that all the neighborhood punks knew he was a soft touch for little favors, free meals, loans, and such. But how much can an old man take before his heart breaks? And see, that's the real reason they called him the Pelican. Because everyone always leaned on him. Well, he'd let the young just break open his skin and feed off of his blood till they were full up. And he was done in. Of course, at the funeral, none of his friends would ever admit it, no. They just went on about admiring his spirit. Telling Andre that they couldn't understand why a matin so grand would be taken so young. I know it sounds cold to say, but when the pelican died, it was a good break for Andre. Well, since he had no other parents, it was his only chance at escaping his granddad's influence. And of course, when social workers tried to get him fired up about school, he came. But he still spent most of his time scribbling nihilistic rhymes that he'd recite on the street corners at night and sometimes write on bare walls by street lights. For a whole year, he went skulking through the rain down those curbs and streets, twisting his pain into words and beats, huddling on the front steps of neighborhood depths, drunk on cheap wine, chanting while his friend Trey clapped time. Traffic grid the lock, front of bricks box, a prison block, cells in a row, neighborhood Jim Crow. All them streets are straight, them lands well mowed. Dictator, castrate everything. Everything where God grow, every block of planned, each park engineer. Earth like Caliban, man in slave where him of fear. Can't see nothing, not made by man's hands. Soon him start thinking of me. A me create the land. Mornings he'd come to class tired. Eyes like two wildfires burning behind barbed wire. But by 11th grade, his anger had begun to fade. He started coming out of the shade, looking to find some of that sunshine of getting good grades. But actually started sticking to the curriculum. And he was one smart kid. So what I did is I kind of took him under my wing, tried to help him get into the swing, made it clear to him that all things he learned down at the Pelicans had given him a, a very good business sense. So I encouraged him to pursue a practical route. And yes, as time went on, I could see he was losing some of his imagination. I saw his fine sense of indignation get a bit blunted, but come on! His whole goddamn life would have been stunted if by grade 12 he hadn't put his granddad's childish ways on the shelf. What I did, I did out of the goodness of my heart. No one else was there to impart to him the need to plan. And no one else was stepping in to help him understand what it meant to become a man. And I'm not saying I understood his lot. It's just, sometimes when you're at a loss, you've got to teach what you've been taught. Andre left on a full scholarship later that fall. And in my heart, all I could do was rejoice. A few weeks ago, Andre showed up at my door. I hadn't seen him in about seven years. He didn't even offer a hello. Just looked at my face in the light and like Moe's right pointed index finger at me. Da she. Da she. And I invited him in offered him some tea. Well, he just sat himself down and, and started recounting the last seven years to me. At a certain point in time, it gets to be in your mind that there's no alternative. You, know? you wind up telling yourself, in just a few more years, I'll have me a career, hell. 
<laughs> if anyone can, I'll keep it real plus. By now, you've been taught that that school is a bastion of democracy that puts the unequal on a footing of equality. But you know, you know that meritocracy is just another word invented by the aristocracy. Hell, even a blind man could see. If there is any lesson in school worth knowing, it's that going is worse than not going. But now you in first year, and shit moves quick here. No time for politicking. If I'm not in my books, my grades are slipping. Dude, fuck the NAACP, yo. You've got a report due tomorrow on stock option policy, you hear me? Well, over time, it gets to be that in your mind there's no alternative. Like if the life you're living is the only one you could possibly live, and like this education you're getting is the only one that they could possibly give. Why? The desire for learn is really not a need we need to be taught, you know? The real shit? You must earn it, Andre. It cannot be bought. Fuck it. You got work to do. And the new saying above your desk says the best way out is always through sides. You're so far from where you were. The traffic grid a lock, front of bricks, box, prison blocks, cells in a row, neighborhood Jim Crow. Shit. You are so far from where you well, now it just seems like it'd be quicker to get there, wherever there might be, than it would be to turn around and come back down to Earth. Every block, plant, each park, engineer, Earth like Caliban, man and slave, we're in the fear. Fuck it. Yo, the writing is on the wall. And you know what happens to them soft motherfuckers that quit? They wind up like Trey, floating brooms and shit, distant, look on his face like a runner who couldn't keep pace, pulled out of the race, can't deal with the so-called real world, cause what? Now I refuse to do what everyone else does? Well, it wouldn't be like I was resisting. I'd still be caught up in the system. Only got my mind on one thing, wealth. Only concern now is myself. And all I'd really want would be to get rich quick. Buying lottery tickets, gambling and shit. <laughs> Smart enough to know I'm never going to hit. <laughs> but by now, shrinks would have taught me to think that I could find, embedded in my personal history, the answer to a mystery that is systemic, endemic to certain demographics, whose children get trafficked into schools. So teachers can teach them their golden rule. Your ticket out of this cesspool, young man, is school. I know this shit happened to me anyway. I went all the way, got my, my MBA. But there ain't a goddamn day when I don't look at my life and say, was this really the only fucking way? <laughs> you better believe there's one thing I'll never do. Just walk around some school like you, waving my degree in the face of every single kid I see, yelling out like Uncle Ben, hey, look at me. 